In this video, in this lecture, I want to spend some time looking at the interactive Ruby environment. Uh, I was uh, looking at some of the other um, videos that are out on YouTube that, uh, that talk about IRB and you know some of them give them examples of doing simple arithmetic and that kind of thing and I, I thought that yeah that's that's great and that's <clears throat> a good introduction um, but I think that there's some other things that we can do with IRB that <clears throat> are a little more interesting um, that help with prototyping of classes with exploration of, of classes and that kind of thing and so I thought we would uh, spend a little bit of time in this video talking about those things and this will be well, it'll be as long as uh, it takes me to go through some of it. So um, I'm running all of this in Cloud9, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide some of the things here so that we just have the terminal up. Um, I, I started off here by um, you know, typing ruby-v. I wanted to see the which version of Ruby I was running. I also want to look to see what version of Rails I'm running. I think it's 5.0. Yeah. Okay, so when I start off by RB uh, with new... Um, no options. Um, and start this up, and you'll see that it actually shows me which version of Ruby um, um, is being used, um, and then it gives me a line number there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's useful information. But I think the the other thing that we could do is I think it's simple. Maybe it's dash dash simple prompt. Uh, and then that'll get rid of that information. I don't know if you really care which version you're running, what line number you're on. It's, I don't think it's really that important. There's actually another version. I think it's like no prompt. I think that's right. I don't know if that works. No prompt. Um, maybe it's maybe there's a dash. No prompt. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so here's no prompt. And actually. Uh, I think that no prompt is kind of helpful um, in some cases when you're maybe developing a class and you want to type in all of the um, the different <clears throat> um, um, features of the class and not have it interrupted with a uh, with a prompt. So let me um, let me start off by I'm gonna I'm gonna type in a um, a, a really simple class um, in this. Um, um, in IRB, <clears throat> just to give us a sense of uh, you know some of the things that we can do. So I'm gonna just go ahead and define. Actually, let me go back to the prompt version, the simple prompt, and use that. Um, well, so one of the things that you can do is uh, you can um, type in classes um, with uh, with interactive Ruby. Um, so I'm going to type in a class. I'm going to call it my class, and I'm just going to define one method called run me, and I'm going to take in a name. And this is actually where you know maybe not having the prompt would would be helpful, but I don't think it really matters. Um, and then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, it's basically hello world, um, hello there, name, and that, and I'll end my class. So basically this class um, defines a, uh, a method called run me. Um, Let's see what uh, what we can do with uh, with this class now. Because there's um, there's a couple of things that I think are um, kind of interesting. So I have this class called my class, and I can do things like check to see um, what. Actually, I can create a variable called test Let's see. new. So now I have a, um, an instance of this class that's instantiated. Um, and I can do things like say, well, what is the class of test of this object that I've created? Um, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to test equals new. So sorry, string up new. Uh, it's an empty string. I can actually add, I can, but also I can just, I can now text test to see what the, uh, 
pick with the class is or this this variable. And that tells me that it's a that it's a string. Um, and I don't know, you know, you know, as as you start to get in into uh, uh, trying to sort out, you know, different aspects of things that you're debugging, um, and programs that you're debugging, or maybe you're uh, within interactive Ruby, or you find yourself um, accessing a number of different things, and you just want to figure out, well, what is the what is the class of the thing that I'm actually working with? Uh, all right, the other thing that I can do. Uh, you know, I, I created this uh, this method called run me. I, I want to be able to run it, right? And I want to be able to do something with it. So I can do something like say test run me, pass it a parameter, and basically what it's done is it's it's run the uh, the method that uh, I had defined in my um, in my little test class. So. Um, Anyway, the, I, I think one of the things that I, I just find interesting about um, um, about interactive Ruby, yes, you can do all that simple arithmetic that you find in some of the the demos that are out there, but um, I mean, this is this is Ruby, right? I mean, that that's it's really there as an aid for you to uh, to be able to try out ideas, you know, interactively, um, you know define functions and test to see whether or not you're you're properly um, um, defining for instance uh, regular expressions if you're defining a regular expression in your program um, you might want to you might want to do something like uh, um, see whether or not you have the the right uh, the right search strings for a um, for a regular expression see if it's resolving correctly so Anyway, that's um, that's basically all I wanted to mention. Above all the other things that you'll see in some of the um, some of the other Ruby um, our interactive Ruby videos that are out there. I mean, yes, those are those are those are helpful um, to get you started. But I think that there are some more advanced things that you could really do with uh, interactive Ruby. And I'm not even really touching on all of them, but um, I think that this is um, um, this is a great environment for being able to to really try some things out. So, anyway, that's the uh, that's all I wanted to share.